Okay, and we are live. Hooray, did we agree that I was going to introduce us? Okay, because I was letting my dog out knowing that there would be some background noise. Um, can I get a like or a comment on our Facebook Live if you have distractions sometimes, um, even though you plan, you know, the right timing, this is when the UPS driver is going to arrive and the dog's going to bark and all the things. Um, but anyway, we're glad you're here. We are going to do some seated desk exercises. Um, you'll see that I actually brought a chair inside of my kitchen and Kim is going to be demonstrating from her office space as well. We know that um, We've been doing a lot of things that take up a little bit of space, but maybe you're joining in a small space. So we're going to show you how you can get moving, mostly seated, potentially in a small space. And then I am going to attempt to show y'all a snack. So without further ado, we'll uh, turn it over to Kim. All right. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So this is my, um, I'm calling this my not really dressed for physical activity. I'm also not really in a space where I would prefer to be doing it, but it happens, we're at work, and there's no reason not to uh, not to stay active in, in some way. So what we need today is, um, I did have to switch out my office chair, which has wheels for one that doesn't. So make sure that you're in a nice um, sturdy chair. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get started um, sitting nice and straight um, in our chair. And we are going to just start with some shoulder rolls. So I'm going to start with those going back and make sure with this you're, um, you know, nice and sitting nice and tall, feet are flat and square in front of you. And then when you're ready, you can roll them forward. Just getting everything nice and warmed up. And I've got a timer, so I'm gonna see if I can keep us on, um, on time today. So each of these will be about 15, 20 seconds um, each. All right, our next one is to bring our hands up into kind of like a football ball position. And so from here, we're gonna take our arms and just go up overhead and pull them down. And so really thinking about um, controlling this movement um, and really bringing them and you can even um, you can stop here or you can bring them down um, to your hips um, and really think about you know like that imaginary rope that you're pulling uh, down I don't know what that machine at the gym is called but I know that there's one that's like this I don't really like uh, machines and gyms but um, this is an easy one. Again, looking for things that don't require a lot of space. And just nice and control, really engaging all the muscles as you're, as you're going. All right, we're gonna shift a little bit. We're gonna be seated still about halfway up, of, up your chair. And think about engaging your abs and all we're going to do is just lift alternating feet so you can even kind of lean back just a little bit to think about engaging your core and just having that like little toe step just barely touching your toe to the floor before you raise it again remembering to be breathing it's so easy to just hold our breath. You know, if you guys do that during meetings, I think sometimes I forget to breathe even during meetings. It's important to check in with your body throughout the day. Make sure that you've got that core engaged, really holding your back flat, but away from the back of the, of the mat or back of the chair. Okay, so now we're gonna have our legs spread a little bit apart. We're gonna hinge at the hips and come forward and just do a fly motion. I'll move my keyboard here. And arms are just gonna kind of curl under your seat. And again, not floppy movements, really controlled 
thinking about squeezing their shoulder blades together. It's always so fun to see everyone's different backgrounds. For folks who don't know Extension, my office uh, is a good example of the chaos that is a health educator's office. All right, a few more of these. Again, making sure that your back is straight, core is engaged, and really pulling those shoulder blades together as you come up. All right. The next one that we're gonna do, again, still seated, is um, we're gonna just raise one leg up, kind of toe touch to the side, and then come back down. Toe touch out and back down. And it doesn't have to be a really high lift with your foot, just be small, depending on what's comfortable for you. Back still straight, not really leaning too far, keeping good control, foot's flexed to point your toe. Couple more times on each side. All right, perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna do some pushes with our arms. So starting in this position, hands nice and flat, we're just gonna push out in front of you, kind of like you're pushing someone away. If you haven't had a good day, maybe you need to do that. Hopefully not. And you can add a little twist in the torso if you'd like. We're going to do a little bit more of that pretty soon. So really just focused on keeping those arm muscles, keeping the arms up, not letting the elbows fall down. Just pushing away. by now you're feeling a little bit warm. All right, so from here, we're gonna do some side bends. So sitting nice and tall, we're just gonna take our hand and reach down, touch your, you know, tip of your finger to the floor. If you can, if you can't, it's okay. Just touch as far down as feels comfortable. Um, and just really thinking about engaging those side oblique muscles protecting your back, which is nice and straight. And you get nice, slow, controlled movements. It's not a race. We're not trying to get any certain number done. We're just spending about 15, 20 seconds on each of these. going to go back to that torso I was talking about. We're going to bring our hands up here and if you've got a back on your chair we're going to focus on touching your elbow to the back of your chair. I'm just twisting through the torso. Had a small weight in your office, like hand weights. You can add hand weights to a lot of these exercises just for a little extra effort. A couple more on each side. All right. So now we're going to do some single leg calf raises. So your feet are nice and square in front of you. Um, and you're just going to lift, start with your right foot, just up, bringing it up. Um, I just can't see my feet, but um, focus on just bringing up your calf to raise it. And then you want to almost push it back down. 
and then raise the left one, push it back down, just to give it some resistance. One hand on each. If you don't want to use your hands, you can just focus on raising each foot um, to activate your calf muscle. Mm -hmm. This is a good time to remind you to drink enough water throughout the day. Whenever I don't drink water, I get Charlie horses, which is what I think of every time I do calf raises. So if you haven't had enough water today, this is a good chance to remind yourself to do that. All right, the, last, the next thing that we're gonna do is a chair sit up. So you're still sitting about halfway up your chair. You wanna put your um, arms across, lean uh, slightly back, and then bring yourself up. So you're just doing that sit up motion right in your chair. Think about engaging the core, keeping your back nice and straight, your feet stay on the ground. pulling yourself up with your ab muscles. All right. Next, we're gonna do some um, leg extensions. So our foot's gonna come out and just curl under, right under the seat. So you can do the first side just nice and controlled, extending that leg and really controlling it as you curl it underneath the chair. And then you can switch and do the other side. Again, just nice slow movements. Just do it at the pace that feels good to you. And we have just a couple more of these. All right, the next one is kind of fun. You um, spread your uh, knees out wide, cross your hands across your chest, and we're gonna come down and really engage your core and your back muscles to pull yourself. So if you're doing this one in the office, you might want to let your coworkers know that you're fine, everything's fine. But want to control, have a nice um, flat back, and again, not a real quick jerky motion, just nice and controlled. This probably feels really good if you've been sitting in an office chair for too long is the case for too many of us. All right, wonderful. The next one, we're gonna, the last one we're gonna do before stretching, just to put our arms out and just do arm flutters. And we're going to start with our palms facing down, and in a few minutes we're going to um, turn our turn our hands up, and switch it over. But just nice and quick, but still controlled. Back is straight, and then flip it over. Palms up. that, we're just going to take a couple shoulder rolls, backward and forward. When you're ready, take a deep breath up. Grab your left wrist and pull to the right side. Grab 
up and right, and then switch over to your left, left side. And big breath in. All right, that does it. That's 15 minutes. Thank you so much, Kim. I feel amazing and I hope all of you do as well. I'll share a couple of reminders as I kind of set up. Um, I'm Samantha and I'll be uh, guiding us in a fruit salad uh, cooking demo today. I'm actually quite excited because my husband does all of the grocery shopping, all of the meal prep and all of the meal prep and presentation. So I basically just eat whatever's prepared. Um, so when today was on the books, he said, well, who's doing the cooking demonstration? I said, I am. So maybe like uh, me, you might be a little intimidated, particularly, I think the thing I dislike the most about recipes is that it says it takes five minutes and then it takes me 15 minutes. Maybe I'm a slow slicer and dicer. So we're gonna go with this one and see how long it takes. I will share that the only prep that we did was we did wash the apples and the grapes and then let the grapes sit um, and drain a little bit. So that was the only prep we've done. Other than that, I'm gonna wash my hands for a full 20 seconds and tell you a story while I do that. And then we're gonna see how long it takes. So I'm excited you're here and let's see how it goes. So I did wanna share that I'm really excited about that workout because we can maybe even post and talk about how um, I just got my first Pfizer shot and my arm was feeling really sore. Um, and I kept trying to remind myself to move. So we can tag this as like the, you know, keep your arms moving, keep the blood moving um, so that it doesn't, uh, the muscle doesn't just sit there and you feel the soreness. So I'm really excited to move. Um, and I really like learning those slow controlled movements, particularly that I can revisit. The other thing I'll share just because as we talk and prep is, um, you know, I, we, we in Virginia, we do mindful meetups. Um, so I'm in a slice or apples. It says with the skin on. So didn't say to take it off. So I won't. And, uh, on Mondays at 8.30 a.m., we start with a mindful meetup, maybe something about um, a practice we can do, an intention we can set. Um, so I feel really good on Monday mornings. Then on Wednesday afternoon, obviously, we have this Facebook Live together, um, and we're moving and talking about vibrant, beautiful foods that fuel our body. And outside of that, I sometimes forget to practice what I preach, you know? I sit in my office and I write grants about how challenging it is to prioritize ourselves. And so if you are like me um, and maybe embracing some new strategies, I'd love for you to share in the um, chat, you know, what's been working for you or maybe something that hasn't been working because you know, when I put something on the calendar and have to reschedule, sometimes I feel like I've failed. So one thing that really helps me is um, sharing about that. So um, often many of us have heard of SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. And some folks like to make them SMARTS goals with an S at the end, because they're shared. And then you have somebody else to just talk about, you know, what's working, what's not working. So I feel like that's, you know, for me, that's like 90% of the joy of the mindful meetups and these Facebook lives is that I'm seeing other people who are on their journey um, to wellness and just really remembering that it's a constant journey and some seasons and years and times we're going to be you know, meeting our goals and sometimes not, and, you know, just getting back to it whenever we can. I like to talk about the fact that when you're meditating and your mind wanders, it's the coming back to the breath, coming back to the present moment. That's really the practice. It's not about, can I empty my mind uh, necessarily and not have anything there? It's, can I allow those things to happen? And I kind of do that also with physical activity and healthy eating. It's like sometimes I get away and then I come back. So that's been, um, you know, 
part of the journey and uh, having self-compassion for the times or the seasons that you don't have time for it. Um, not saying that you shouldn't have time for it, but you know, just a just a little note on that because I don't know. I really I vibe on self compassion. I've been talking with a lot of people today about, um, you know, how can we learn to forgive ourselves to learn to live by living. So if that's a helpful mantra for you, just kind of thinking about, oh, okay. Um, I'm learning as I go. So one thing that I'm doing is trying to make sure I'm not slicing my fingertips. So hopefully anybody who does, um, if you are, um, if you've ever uh, scared anybody in the kitchen with your skill set, maybe check out a local extension class about serving safely and knife skills. We offer those types of classes because these are really life skills and. Uh, Sometimes we don't have opportunities for them in our K through 12 experience. Um, maybe we didn't go through a whole K through 12 experience and it's never too late to learn. So I really like, obviously I like learning. I'm an academic, I'm staying in, staying in it for life. Um, so maybe there's something you'd like to learn too. Um, I just started Spanish lessons. So that's what I'm prioritizing right now. Okay, how long has this taken y'all? It's seven minutes, are we seven minutes in and I'm only done with some apples? It's okay, because I have a feeling the bananas are gonna be swift. So I'm gonna update y'all that this is what I've considered diced. I really, um, I have a cookbook that says, slice it the size of a bean. I'm like, there are many types of beans, like what size is that? So this recipe just said diced. So I went with this size. Hopefully that's gonna be a good size. Two bananas, we can peel them. Okay, also, are you somebody who peels from the stem back? Or did you know that some people peel it the other way? I'm seeing some faces. It is hilarious because I think these are these are cultural, you know, differences. So I learned so I learned pulling from the stem back. Someone recently showed me that you can, you know, do this because then you have you can hold the stem while you eat it. I never knew that. So, you know, maybe you can try one or the other. The counter's clean, so I feel confident that, you know, the banana can touch it. If that, I don't know, maybe I'll get a serve safe person to inform me about that. So the bananas are going quickly. So I'm lining, I don't know if you can see or if it matters, but I'm lining the two bananas up so I get a two for one for every slice. Is that, is that allowed in our <laughs> knife skills classes? feel good about it. Hopefully it's okay. Then we got this beautiful cutting board as a Christmas gift and so pretty and I love it. Okay now y'all two cups of grapes halved. This seems like a lot of work. You know these are the kinds of things. No I don't know. Grapes are small. We'll see. We are officially eight minutes in to the easiest fruit salad there ever was. <laughs> and I haven't stopped. I know I'm talking a lot, but I haven't stopped. I'm working. Not quite as hard as my 15 minutes for my full mile. Also, is anybody counting food prep in there? Can we add that to our, our mileage? Cause like I'm working my shoulders here. I have a nice, straight back, my core is engaged, you know. I'm standing, so there's that. I could do calf raises. That's probably going to introduce some knife skill questions if I start doing calf raises. Hot other tips, you can do calf raises while brushing your teeth. One of my favorite things to share is, and I think Morgan's heard this before, so that's a cup with like two extras, but I'm gonna do that. And then do it again. 
um, stomping. So we often hear about muscle strengthening and aerobic physical activity, but we also need to do our bone strengthening activities. And one of the reasons we do that is because in our bones, we have osteoclasts and osteoblasts um, that we basically want to increase in size um, or at least maintain their size. And one of the ways you can do that is by stomping your feet on the ground. So that's another thing you can do while waiting in line, potentially while waiting for something to cook or prep. And by stomping against the ground, your bones shake in a good way and it reverberates and creates a stronger osteoblast and osteoclast and prevents osteoporosis. So if you wanna get your little stomps in, feel free to do that. Um, that's one of my favorite uh, studies. Okay, we're, we're cooking now, folks. <gasps> I put the wrong, okay, so I'm gonna take all my fruit and put it in a bowl. Ta -da. Now, um, I am a person who is dairy free due to abdominal pains when I consume dairy products. So this is an almond milk yogurt, but it's, a, it's an artisanal one. So it's thicker looking. So I think we're gonna get that same luxurious um, kind of extra treat. So in case you're into consistencies, it's not, it's not a super liquid looking one. Half a cup of low fat yogurt, whether it be almond or not. Then we've got some OJ, two tablespoons, and we're almost done. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Oh man, see, this adds to the time if your stuff isn't open. So then, here we go. One tablespoon, the next. Two teaspoons of cinnamon. Whisk together and pour. I don't know y'all, we're getting so close to the end and um, seems like a lot of cinnamon. Ooh, I love cinnamon, so that's good for me, but um, just so you know, it's a lot. It smells good. I love cinnamon. Probably check online all the good benefits that cinnamon has. Okay, and our final step. Drizzle the yogurt over the fruit. And also just for, you know, transparency, there's still some fruit in here. <laughs> I'm sure that's also allowed. And then I'm gonna mix it up and I'm gonna have an awesome, healthy, colorful snack. Um, I would probably add, I have heard this before, um, and uh, maybe someone else can unmute and share. I believe if you put lemon juice on it, it'll help the apples from browning too fast. But this is like, ooh, this is healthy, healthy, beautiful dessert. I am so excited about this. I hope my husband is too. Let's see what happens with my, uh, this is the first thing I've cooked in probably a year. I know I'm using cook lightly, but there we go. And 14 minutes. So there we go. Um, anybody want to share about the, le is it lemon or lime that you would put on the apples to help them from browning? You can, you can do either one. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Um, stay healthy and strong, um, both for yourself and your community. And uh, keep us posted. Check out other extension offerings aside from FedEx because um, maybe you'll learn something along the way for these life skills. And we'll see you next week.